as we have been telling you all afternoon, President Joe Biden about to land at SeaTac International Airport. He's here this weekend for two big fundraising stops in the Pacific Northwest. He just left San Francisco and Air Force Base there not too long ago. He's actually arriving in Seattle an hour earlier than initially planned. Now, a live look right now as Air Force One slowly approaches the runway at SeaTac International Airport. Previous years, we have seen presidents land and use Boeing Field, but because of a strike happening with the Boeing firefighters, uh, their contract negotiations as they're working that out, that was, uh, it was decided that he would use SeaTac International Airport instead. Now, this means that this is going to affect commercial uh, air, airplane travel plans right now for travelers in Seattle because anytime the president visits, SeaTac confirming that they hold all airplanes from uh, leaving or arriving at SeaTac for a full 30 minutes. Again, if you are just tuning in right now, you're taking a live look at President Biden landing at SeaTac International Airport. That is Air Force One that you see approaching the runway there. Security presence high at the airport as well as northbound I-5 in downtown Seattle where the president will be staying at the Westin Hotel. I want to bring in Preston Phillips, who is monitoring the situation from the live desk as well. Preston? I mean, you got to imagine uh, the flight in here. You can see Mount Rainier. It's a gorgeous sunny day. We're, what, well past the 80s, 82 degrees. The last time uh, President Biden was here in town was April 22nd, 2022. That was Earth Day. It was kind of similar weather back then, but about 30 degrees cooler. It was about 54 degrees back on Earth Day uh, in April of 2022. Probably a similar sight, but not as warm as it is today. So he'll probably enjoy being here in Seattle for the next couple of days. Uh, as you were saying, Mary, he's got a reception uh, tonight. He's got one tomorrow. Uh, it will all go to the Biden Victory Fund. So tickets start around 500 bucks. And if you pay $25,000 or more, according to the invitation, you'll get a photo with President Biden. So he'll leave SeaTac for Delaware tomorrow right around 1.30. So the first fundraiser is at 7 p.m. tonight in Seattle. And then there's one at noon uh, tomorrow in Medina. Both days are going to be gorgeous weather, so a perfect time to visit here in Seattle. Uh, Biden's Visit. It does come at an interesting time when the Biden administration, you know, of course, under great pressure uh, from pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian groups. You know, pro-Israel side upset over Biden holding offensive weapons shipments to Israel. Pro-Palestinian side really wanting a permanent ceasefire. And this, of course, is Israel Defense Forces move ahead with their Rafa incursion to root out remaining Hamas terrorists as a ceasefire a deal between Israel and Hamas crumble. Now, Biden's visit earlier today uh, was met with protests outside of a fundraiser in the Bay Area that was in Portola Valley in San Mateo. California. Uh, as the president's motorcade approached, dozens of protesters demanded a ceasefire, trying to really send a message to the president. And now we're getting reports in here in Seattle that at 4th and Columbia, there's another similar protest for pro-Palestinian supporters out there, uh, you know, calling on another ceasefire. But definitely going to be a busy day for President Biden while he's here in Seattle, tying up the roadways again before he landed here, as we've been mentioning here on Como, 30 minutes before that plane were to land, all air traffic was shut down. So everything came to a standstill. Uh, all flights delayed, of course. And then once he gets off the plane and his motorcade sets out, you can imagine all those roads are going to be shut down until he gets into Seattle and where he's going this evening. We want to give you a heads up as far as road closures are concerned. This is a very quick stop. It's essentially a business trip for President Biden. You don't see a big group of dignitaries waiting for him. As soon as he uh, gets off that plane, the motorcade will bring him up to Seattle using northbound I-5. So right now, if you have travel plans that take you through Seattle, northbound I-5, keep in mind there are rolling closures. Anytime the presidential motorcade moves up, they are going to close the freeway, the roads down for a good several minutes long before the president's motorcade is even there. So segments of northbound I-5 are closed right now because they know the motorcade is going to be using that route. And through downtown Seattle, we're talking about an exclusion zone, a closed zone from 4th and 7th Avenue, as well as Lenora and Olive Way. So essentially downtown right around the Westin Hotel. If you are just tuning in, uh, Air Force One has landed at SeaTac International Airport, halting all air traffic at the airport until the president is off that plane and safely on the road. And I will say, uh, just kind of back out to what we were mentioning before Jackie Kent was talking about, where I was mentioning actually reports coming in the 4th and Columbia, uh, where it's blocked off down there. You have pro-Palestinian protesters there on the street uh, demanding a ceasefire, definitely wanting to send a, pres uh, a message to President Biden, which we, he will probably see when his motorcade shows up. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Jackie Kent now reporting that people uh, for Biden are walking into Latte Hotel off 5th and Columbia. And then she's saying uh, you know, across the street is a group of pro-Palestinian 
Palestinian protesters, and they're calling visitors murderers and yelling shame on you, 4th and 5th block between Columbia and Marion. Uh, we've got a pretty good uh, shot of that, so we'll be showing you that soon. We've got protesters out there with their signs, and some signs kind of vulgar, so we've got to be careful what we show here. But as we watch uh, Air Force One here kind of pull into SeaTac International Airport on this gorgeous sunny afternoon, we're going to see President Biden, his crew, uh, come off the plane. They're going to get into their motorcade. They've got some people waiting for them as well. Also, what is interesting about all this, before a president shows up to a city, uh, you know, there's a lot of preparation in place. Uh, their Secret Service detail, a lot of people show up before to do the security sweeps wherever they might be going to make sure everything is secure and ready for the president to arrive. You've got uh, Secret Service already fanned out throughout the downtown area, securing all of those positions along with Seattle police and other federal agencies and entities that are down there. But as we watch the Air Force One just sitting right there on the tarmac, you could see as the camera kind of uh, panned in a second ago, you could see Mount Rainier in there in the distance as we uh, hit past the 80 city. So what a perfect day for the president to show up to Seattle on a nice and sunny afternoon here at SeaTac International Airport. All right. So what does this mean for weekend plans if you are uh, watching this live? As the door is about to open, and it might be a few minutes before President Biden uh, gets off that plane, uh, it means that traffic will be impacted. There is a Mariners game this evening in Seattle Soto. Uh, definitely expect uh, closures happening there. A live look right now, it looks like uh, Governor Jay Inslee and his wife Trudy are about to approach uh, Air Force One, getting ready to greet President Biden um, as he gets off that plane. This, again, a very quick stop for the president, really a 24-hour trip to the Pacific Northwest. It looks like that's Mayor Bruce Harrell uh, and his wife uh, ready to greet uh, the president as well on this fundraising trip. It looks like uh, Governor Inslee, um, now Constantine, the mayor, uh, as, as well as co uh, Congress members, as Congresswoman Del Bene, as well as uh, Pramila Jayapal, also there, and Port Commissioner Hasegawa is part of the group uh, ready to greet the president. Up right now to uh, give President Biden a ride to where he needs to go. And they're not using the big, huge stairway today. They're only using the smaller stairway, make it a little easier for him to access the stairs and make his way down to all of his people that are waiting for him. Uh, but a big visit for him, uh, hopefully for his sake, to raise a lot of money for his campaign going into the 2024 presidential election up against uh, likely candidate President, former President Trump here. Uh, but we're watching this as uh, it is a beautiful day here in Seattle. A lot of people waiting for his arrival. You can see uh, Governor Inslee right there at the bottom of your screen screen there talking to someone you can recognize him by his glasses there just right under the small stairway there uh, but a great day here in Seattle President Biden landing at SeaTac Airport we're going to continue following this for you right here on Como News and you are watching Como News at five o'clock Eric Johnson and Molly Shen join me now our coverage of President Biden's arrival in the Pacific Northwest continues let's continue our live look here at SeaTac Airport as Mary and Preston have pointed out the door is open and the stairs are down and the delegation greeting the president has lined up at the bottom of the stairs so that's a pretty good sign that we can expect the president to step out of Air Force One any moment now after wrapping up that quick trip to San Francisco for fundraising and now doing the same job here in Seattle. That first fundraiser is just two hours away. So the president will get off the plane, uh, make his quick greetings with the, uh, with the greeting delegation there and get into his motorcade and head to downtown Seattle. That first event happening in Seattle this evening again at 7 o'clock. And this trip is strictly business no public appearances. This is about making money for the fundraising attempt and the campaign. He has a fundraiser at 7 o'clock downtown Seattle, then another one in Medina tomorrow at 12.15. There's going to be, be some big hitters at both of those events, and this is about making money to put into the coffers for the re, for the re-election campaign. Uh, tickets for the Medina uh, event are said to be going for around $6,000, and if you want a picture with the president, it might cost you about five times more than that. So President Biden will be walking down those stairs in just a few minutes. Sometimes the president has a ways to walk to get to the motorcade, but this time they're at SeaTac with the delegation waiting for him. Those cars are waiting just a few feet away. Yeah, and it's a quick trip today, uh, getting from the airport and then on. And here we see President Biden coming down the stairs. Again, as we've said, he'll he'll greet his uh, his delegation here at the bottom of the steps and will be taking off pretty quickly. Obviously, all the roads are closed to make it easy for President Biden, but he does have a tight schedule, even arriving here an hour early. It looks like that is uh, most likely Governor Inslee just right there on the other side of the car. We're just seeing the tops of their heads, uh, but we know that Governor Inslee and his wife Trudy 
were uh, at the head there of the group meeting the president, shaking hands, saying hello before he is whisked off to that first fundraiser. It is such a tight schedule. It's good for the president that they were able to get out of San Francisco a little bit early today. Absolutely. He's probably telling members of the delegation, man, you live in a beautiful place. <laughs> right? Gorgeous day here in the Northwest. Mount Rainier is out and gleaming. A little chat here and there. He's got the signature Joe Biden sunglasses on, a oh. dark suit. There's a selfie yeah, that's Yeah, it looks like Pramila Jayapal is taking a selfie with the president <laughs> right now, saying, hey, the president is arriving here in the beautiful oh Pacific Northwest. My. And then Mayor Harrell next to shake his hand. Yeah, there he is. So they're lined up to meet the president uh, and, and uh, President Biden here in just a couple of minutes. There's another photo op, op for Bruce Harrell. They didn't even have to pay the thousands of dollars at the fundraiser for the pictures. Yeah, maybe they'll get another picture at the fundraiser. <laughs> Who knows? But the president taking his time, chatting a little bit with everybody in line. And uh, this is what he does. You know, he is here to make some money. It's quick in and out. He had an event this morning in San Francisco, uh, continues to shake hands with the delegation, and then uh, it's going to be all business from here out. Staying at the Westin Hotel, you see him taking the glasses off there for a conversation uh, with someone, a younger person there. More photos being taken. Looks like he's with Dal Constantine's sure family does. right now. It sure does. So after this meet and greet, the president will get into the car here and leave SeaTac. Uh, again, he's not this tight schedule, but also people who are being affected by this are probably appreciative of this as a quick meet and greet. Air traffic is closed at SeaTac right now, so people who were expecting to be either arriving or taking off at this time, uh, they're being held back until the president has left SeaTac. Uh, so while this is all happening you've got to keep in mind the ripple effect that it's having on travelers around the region people who are trying to fly in and out of SeaTac and we do have roads that are shut down as well right now for that path from SeaTac to the Westin Hotel in downtown Seattle they do keep that clear for the president and his motorcade they will make quick work of it once they're on the roads uh, but for right now uh, they're taking a little bit of time to say hello one group of people who's probably glad that the president had an early start they left the Bay Area about an hour early uh, one group that's happy about that are the Mariner fans the Mariners have a 640 game at T-Mobile Park this allows yeah, them to really get to the ballpark uh, on time and not have to deal with too much of the traffic delays the State Department of Transportation has been warning us for days now that there would be significant travel delays and detours. Preston? Yeah, part of I-5 is already even shut down right now. It's going to be a mess for people who are trying to commute around here on a Friday evening. Even coming in this afternoon, if you were driving on the freeways, you already knew how busy it was, and this is just going to change things even more, especially for anybody trying to get anywhere, especially like the Mariners game you were mentioning here. But right now, as we're watching President Biden here on the tarmac after he got off Air Force One, of course, uh, some nice photo ops here with some uh, local lawmakers and people here uh, throughout the Puget Sound region. But at the same time, when he gets in that motorcade and heads toward downtown Seattle. It's going to be a similar situation uh, as to what he experienced in Portola Valley in San Mateo County in California today. He is going to be greeted with protesters. Like I said earlier, he's got a lot of pressure on him right now from uh, two different major sides on Israel and, and the Palestinian side as well. And he's got a lot of protesters that are already waiting for him to arrive downtown at 4th and Columbia where Jackie Ken is stationed right now. And uh, we're also keeping an eye on that. But as he gets ready here, he'll get in that motorcade in a few minutes and then leave here. But again, Landing here in Seattle on this day, uh, again, two years ago, April 22nd was the last time he was here. Uh, it was another beautiful day. So it's going to be a nice time to visit Seattle, but that doesn't change the fact that there is a ton of pressure on President Biden as he shows up here in Seattle to raise as much money as he can for his campaign. And we'll see when he arrives in downtown what route they take and if he actually even sees those protesters there on the roads. Okay, so the delegation has walked away. President Biden is getting into his vehicle there for the motorcade to get going. Uh, our senior reporter, Chris Daniels, has been at SeaTac throughout the day and is watching this as well for us. Chris? Yeah, I've been standing here watching the short interaction there between President Biden and the delegation on the ground that was greeting him. I think you've mentioned it at this point. It was a small delegation with Seattle Mayor Bruce Harrell. King County Executive Dow Constantine, Congress members Susan Del Bene, Pramila Jayapal, Port of Seattle Commissioner Hasid Gawa. And we saw what appeared to be an interaction. I, I'm not sure who that was exactly with Constantine between President Biden and a young girl there uh, that lasted a couple of minutes. And I was just watching the reaction from the delegation who uh, seemed touched by whatever was said there 
by the president uh, to that young girl. Uh, I can see that delegation now off to the side waiting as well. And, and we've seen these before. I've covered these before. This is uh, always uh, a significant amount of security. You can see the cars lined up. The president is now uh, in the motorcade, and there are several different vans that are lined up as well. And in just a matter of moments, these cars will be speeding away from SeaTac Airport towards downtown Seattle. I am told by the airport staff that once they get the all clear that these cars are away from the airport, the normal operations here at SeaTac will resume. So again, President Joe Biden now here on the tarmac, now in one of those cars directly in front of our cameras. And we can see he is now on the move headed towards downtown Seattle. And as you've been talking about, Preston and Eric and Molly, this is now going to tie up traffic, particularly on I-5 as this motorcade now leaves SeaTac Airport, leaves Air Force One for what is really a, a blitz through Western Washington for a couple of different fundraisers, no official visits, but the president coming to make some money as he seeks re-election again to the White House. Back to you. Thank you, Chris. And it's worth pointing out, it's 5.06 on a Friday night. Uh, this is not only rush hour, but this is a time of day on a Friday when a lot of people are getting out of town or heading home. And that is certainly going to be disrupted by the motorcade that you're watching right now. President Biden in one of those cars heading to downtown Seattle for kind of a whirlwind tour. He was in San Francisco early this morning at an event there. He's got an event night tonight at 7 o'clock in downtown Seattle, then another one in Medina. There's a lot going on, a lot of money to be made for those election coffers, and then he'll be heading out tomorrow afternoon. Sometimes when the president visits for fundraising, there will also be some sort of a public event or a stop that is not the case this weekend to just these quick fundraisers tonight and tomorrow and then he is leaving western washington by tomorrow afternoon not even a full 24 hours in western washington so as we watch president biden's motorcade leave SeaTac airport we've mentioned they're headed downtown to the west end security is already in place for president biden's visit to downtown and as we've mentioned, drivers are already running into this heavy traffic and the detours in place. Some rideshare drivers and businesses are also feeling those impacts. Roads are closed. Police are in place outside the Weston Hotel along Fifth Avenue, as well as near the Rainier Club downtown along Fourth Avenue. Come as Karina Vargas joins us live from near the Weston tonight. So Karina, the president's on the way there. How are things looking? No, Molly, like you mentioned, here in front of the Westin and approximately three blocks down, these barricades have already been set up for President Biden's visit. Now, traffic is already jammed and causing some backups nearby, and travelers are being advised to avoid this area. If your plans take you anywhere near downtown, expect delays and detours. While some share their excitement about a presidential visit, others are anticipating heavy traffic. On 4th Street, there's a lot of barricades. I'm assuming this is going to be at least one of the areas that he's going to stop by there. Uh, you know, like he can't even drop people there or anything like that. So I'm assuming it's going to be a big thing. Some rideshare drivers like Ahmed Al-Khalil said that he's trying to steer clear of the downtown area before the president arrives because he said he knows how chaotic things can get. A few years ago, Camilla Harris stopped by um, and, you know, it was a disaster. You know, roads were being blocked and, you know, we were trying to be redirected. It took like literally hours uh, to get out of the city. A lot of crews and police officers were outside the Westin and setting up barricades. We watched people try to navigate around the closures, including from Lenora to Olive Way and from 4th to 7th Avenue. But ahead of the president's visit, restaurant workers said business was surprisingly slow. I think everyone kind of knows that he's coming into town. And the last time um, we had something like this happen, the freeways were shut down for a while. So I think people are just preparing to just not make the journey downtown. Travel alerts have been issued by SDOT, and they said that while the president's travel route and timing are not published in advance, they're asking people to plan ahead and expect traffic congestion. 
Now, while we wait for the president's arrival, we are told that he is expected to participate in a campaign of reception here in downtown area. So the road closures and delays should continue within the next several hours. And he is spending the night here. So we could expect some of those delays as well tomorrow morning. So again, people are being asked to plan ahead if they are headed here to the downtown area. But for now, reporting in Seattle, Karina Vargas, Common News. Karina, thank you very much. Always exciting when the president comes, always chaotic as well. The president's arrival is the last ingredient for really a perfect storm of traffic in Seattle. His motorcade will be hitting the road right as Mariner fans, I mentioned it earlier, trying to get to T-Mobile Park for tonight's game against the Oakland A's. That starts at 640. There are also several major road projects underway this weekend that will complicate travel during the president's stay. This brings us to our Como Pulse poll. President, er, President <laughs> Phillips. President Phillips. <laughs> President, President <laughs> Phillips, is ladies here. and gentlemen, <laughs> has the results for Thank us. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate the warm welcome. About, <laughs> about 5,000 votes here so far for our post poll, so it's going pretty well so far. To vote right now, though, scan the QR code right here on your screen, and that'll take you right to comonews.com where you can cast your vote. President Phillips really wants you to cast your vote because the more votes, the better. What do you think about presidential or big campaign visits to our region? Well, 73% call it too disruptive. 20% say fine, but rarely benefits locals. 7% call it exciting. Again, vote. President Phillips wants you to. <laughs> Here is a timeline of President Biden's visit. The president has two campaign fundraisers, one at 7 tonight in Seattle, one tomorrow that's right around noon in Medina. He'll be then leaving SeaTac Airport for Delaware tomorrow at 1.30 in the afternoon.